Hey friends, and welcome to our last video of 2023. My name's Emma Lefave, and this time of the year, I tend to do a video of my favorite things. So that's what I thought I'd do today, going through some of my favorite supplies I use this year, maybe some favorite books or artists, or some just big moments in general. But before we get into today's video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of you who have subscribed, who watch my videos, who like my videos. Honestly, without your support, I wouldn't be able to do this as a career and I am so grateful for everyone in this community. You are such a big part of my life, and I just wanna say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you're informed of all the amazing content that is gonna be coming out in 2024. I promise I am coming out with some exciting stuff, and I don't want you to miss it. Okay, so now let's jump right into the video. So I'm gonna try and make this as short and as sweet as possible. Um, but I just want to go through some of my favorite supplies that I started using this year. So the first supply I'm going to share with you is a new brush shape that I tried out, and that is the stroke brush. So my friend Jillian Boone, who also has her own YouTube channel here, um, she started using or she has been using this stroke brush by Princeton Velvet Touch and I I gave it a try and I absolutely fell in love. So the stroke brush is kind of like a flat brush, except that it's a lot longer and it's really fun to use, especially for florals. It gives it these kind of um, geom like geometric kind of look and it's a little bit sharper, but it's just so versatile and so much fun to use. So much so that I have included the shape in my new brush set that is coming out in 2024. Um, so you're gonna get a chance to use your own in one of my new sets that is specifically for florals. I will give you more information when I have some, but it is such a fun shape to use. So I have a quarter inch and a half inch that's coming out. And honestly, I've just kind of fallen in love with this shape. So be on the lookout for more videos where I am using these and demonstrating these. And my new brush set is also gonna come out with a tutorial that goes along with it and how to use it specifically for florals. The other brush shape that I have kind of fell in love with is the Filbert brush. I really love this for florals as well. It's so versatile. There's just so many things you can do with these brush shapes that you can't necessarily get completely with a round brush. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my round brushes. I will always love my round brushes. They're so much fun and they are very versatile, but these are almost like effortless petals that you can create with these. And I just, I, I'm dying for you to try them. So that is my first supply, the stroke brush and the filbert brush. The next supply I came across this year that was sent to me were these Paul Rubens Artist watercolors. So they sent me this huge set of 36 colors and I put my favorites into a palette. And honestly, I find myself reaching for these watercolors more often than not. So this is the palette that I put it in. I believe I did a video, I can't remember. I think I did though, where I put them into the palette. And I do use this palette quite often in my videos, but I find these watercolors such great quality. Um, and there's such an amazing range of colors. Like they have a beautiful dark green and olive green, which you guys know if, um, if you've seen my videos, you know I love my greens. So many beautiful blues, just such a beautiful range of colors in this set. I'm really impressed with the quality of these paints. So that was one of the paint sets that I really enjoyed. And then another one that was sent to me recently, which I haven't really done a video on, I did do a live video of me swatching the 104 dot chart colors, um, and I really, really enjoyed them. But what you didn't see was that Shinhan actually sent me two sets of their primary kind of sets, um, and I haven't really used them yet or put them in a palette, but I have just put them on the side and I've used them a little bit off camera and I actually really enjoy these paints. They're very beautiful quality um, and I'm looking forward to doing more videos with them and doing an actual video with the sets that they sent me. So this is another kind of paint product that I haven't really shown you but I actually really enjoy. 
The next paint set that you guys have seen me use and have seen me do a video on is this very affordable Mi Liang set. Uh, they're by Paul Rubens. Honestly, I hope this came out. <laughs> this is such a great affordable set. I do have a video saying that this is the best one I have found. I really love the range of colors in this set. They do have the two metallics. Um, even the extras that I find in some of the sets that kind of look like this on Amazon, these are actually nice little bonuses. I, the pencil's somewhere because I actually use it often, um, but it comes with a really nice fine liner. The brush is decent. I don't really use the sponge, um, but the extras aren't garbage, which I find in some other sets that I've used. So that's really nice. And then again, you can always take this out. So you have those mixing wells, but honestly, you have such a crazy amount of colors that you don't even need to mix too, too much. You just have such a great variety. And I really, really enjoy this set, especially for beginners who don't want to get overwhelmed with choosing colors for a palette. This is a really great one to start with. And then the last supply that I started using this year, which I need to use more because it is absolutely one of my favorites, these Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2 watercolor crayons. Honestly, I love these things. I feel like they're almost one of those supplies that I love so much that I, I don't want to use it because it's just too pretty to look at. <laughs> but these are so much fun to use. I have used them in a few tutorials, um, even some reels on Instagram. But, and this is the, this is the big pack. Nobody needs the big pack. I do have the small one too that I started out with, but these are so much fun to use. I have like a scrap piece of paper here, which honestly I don't recommend using because it's rough. Um, but just quickly again, where's my favorite color? This is one of my favorites, this periwinkle blue. But these water soluble oil pastel kind of things, they're just so much fun. You can tell how rough this paper is, but just like look at that color. And then the texture you get underneath, it's just, they're so much fun to use. And I am planning to use these more in videos coming up very soon because they're just, they're so much fun. And it just kind of takes me out of my comfort zone. And I don't know, I just, I just need to use them more, but I do have a couple videos on them. So make sure I will link them below, but these are probably one of my favorite supplies that I was introduced to this year. So that is my first category of my favorite things. Um, the stroke brush, I don't, I can't remember if I said this or not. Um, my friend Jillian Boone, who also has a YouTube channel, uh, she's the one that I saw use this and I just had to try it after her and I fell in love. So make sure you check out her channel because she uses these a lot and she is like a magician with a brush. So those are my favorite supplies of 2023. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you are some books that I got this year that I absolutely loved. And there's only one of them that I've actually done a video on, so I'm excited to show you the rest of them that I got. Okay, so the one that you guys got to see in a video this year was A Field Guide to Color by Lisa Solomon. This is like a color guide that I absolutely love. Um, I definitely need to use it more, but if you are interested in color and color mixing and just so many amazing things and, um, ex hold on, and exercises, this is the book for you. I definitely recommend it. Um, watch the video where I kind of go through the whole thing, but there's just so much in here. There's like, um, a bunch of exercises and techniques that you can practice while getting to know your colors and your mixes and just it's just such a great resource to have and also to practice in so there are pra practice pages where you can do some mindfulness um, color meditation and it's just such a beautiful and well written book to have I definitely suggest you check it out and check out her Instagram as well. The next book that I was excited to get was sent by Colby Bloom, who is a beautiful landscape watercolor artist. And landscapes aren't technically my thing. I've been doing them a lot more recently, but after seeing Colby's work and getting her book, I'm definitely more interested in learning more. And this book is perfect for that. She has all these different landscapes and how different times of day and light kind of changes the way you paint things. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. So much great information and basics in these, in this book that I highly recommend you look into. So there's a lot of like daylight stuff, but then you can get into 
some of the beautiful like moonlight, blue hour, golden hour, and just so many beautiful paintings that you can follow along with. And her instructions are really well written out, as well as the demonstrations of each step. So if you're into painting landscapes and kind of just wanting to know how to paint them uh, more efficiently and <laughs> better, I would definitely suggest checking out this book. So Mastering Light and Watercolor by Colby Bloom. Definitely check her out on Instagram. And I believe she even has a YouTube channel as well. The next book is another book that I have by the Mint Gardener, Sarah Simon. I think I have all her books now. <laughs> um, this I think is her, yes, it's her second workbook, which these books are really cool because you actually paint inside the book. So the whole first part of the book is um, some, you know, talk about color mixing and techniques, which is really great. The one thing I love about Sarah's books is the color combinations, the color recipes. She has such a beautiful color palette with a lot of her paintings that she works with, and she shows you exactly how to mix these colors yourself. So it gives you the actual percentages of which colors to use. And I absolutely love that. And one thing I love about it as well is that in the projects, it gives you the colors that you need, but it also tells you the color recipes at the bottom of the page again. So you don't have to flip back and try and find it. That's probably one of my favorite parts. And again, beautiful step-by-step -step instructions. And these illustrations are gorgeous. You can go over them with a fine liner and as well, and then paint them inside. And it's just, it's such a fun book to do. It kind of takes the, the guessing and the brain power <laughs> out of painting. You just kind of go with the flow and follow these simple instructions and you know you're learning so much while painting some beautiful illustrations so I really love this as well I definitely need to um, get on this and use it and then the last book that I was sent was by Harriet de Winton, who is an amazing watercolor artist from the UK. This is A Year of Watercolor. So it's a seasonal guide to botanical watercolor paintings. So this is such a brilliant idea. I mean, honestly, I kind of wish I thought of this myself, but she goes through these illustrations by seasons. And as you can see, it's not just botanicals. There's like cute little animals and stuff, which she's amazing at. Her detail in her work is amazing. Um, she has such a different style than I do, but her detail is absolutely gorgeous. So like the spring, um, the birds, the strawberries, like just so much variety in this book. And I love that it is based out by season. So you have like autumn and winter. It's just, it's gorgeous. So much in this book. And again, step-by-step -step instructions, the, the mixes that you use to create, um, these beautiful colors. It's just such a great book that I definitely suggest if you are into the style, you pick it up because it is so well done. Um, but I really, really love it. Okay, so that was my second category of some books that I really loved this year. Um, I usually do one of brand new artists that I have started following. I don't know if I followed too many new artists this year, but I definitely created a closer relationship with two artists that I love. Jillian Boone, who was the Crafty Fox, but I think she goes by her name now. Um, uh, she also might be known as Brush Movement on YouTube. She has been killing it in this YouTube and Instagram game. Her style and her paintings are absolutely stunning and to die for. I love following her and sometimes I will just put on her videos while I'm eating lunch and stuff. I absolutely love painting with her, watching her work. It's just, you need to follow her. And we've built a really nice relationship over the past year, which I am so grateful for. And then another artist, Christy Rice, we got to do a video this year as well together, which was so much fun where she was teaching me kind of more um, the mindfulness and the joy that she puts into her watercolor, which was so much fun. Um, and it's just, it's so much fun to sit with other artists and chat because you have so much more in common than you would even think. And you've, I found that they kind of just get me. So I've had so much fun with Christy Rice as well this year. And those are two relationships that I have built this year that I'm, I'm really excited about. And yeah, those are some of the watercolor artists that I have built relationships with this year. Okay, and then usually I do a little 
like look back at some of my videos that I did this year. Um, this year was a little bit harder on YouTube. I found um, I had been just really busy with a lot of, you know, personal things and um, work things that I don't know if there's any standout videos that I loved too, too much, but one series that I really enjoyed doing was last January and I did that watercolor week where I did absolute beginner kind of going through seven days of beginner drills for watercolor and that was a lot of fun and I am planning something similar again for this January because I think it's a really great um, beginner course to kind of start with for people who maybe got some watercolors for Christmas or the holidays and they just want to start and they have no idea where to start. So be on the lookout this January for some beginner friendly tutorials of where the heck to start with watercolor if you're interested because we're gonna have a lot of fun. And then the other series which I ended up only doing two videos on which I plan to kind of expand a bit more this year on was finding the joy in watercolor. So like I said I was struggling a little bit this year with finding the joy in painting again just because this is something that I've turned into a career and I enjoy, but it's not always as easy as it might come across. So finding the joy in watercolor uh, was a series that I wanted to start. And I started by collaborating with Christy Rice and I found the joy in painting with someone else. That was episode one and it was so much fun to do. Like I said, talking and chatting with her and just kind of, you know, picking apart another artist's brain, which was very valuable to me. So I really enjoyed that video. And then the second video I did was painting outside. And that was so therapeutic for me. Um, obviously I can't do it right now because it's winter and it's awful out, but I look forward to in the spring going back outside and then just kind of, you know, coming up with more ideas of where I can find the joy in just painting for myself again. So I really enjoyed starting that series and plan to continue it in the new year. And then lastly, I just want to talk about some big moments of 2023 because it was a crazy great year. Um, so my watercolor subscription boxes came out with Craftimo this year from January to December. Um, the year is done. Some people are still continuing their subscription because they joined halfway through the year. There's still a little bit of time left and this is the last run that we are doing of them ever again. So if you're interested, look in the description below because this is it. But that was probably the biggest project I've ever done in my life and I'm very, very proud of it. And I love how it turned out. It was just so much fun and I'm excited because this year we are coming up with something new and exciting. We are still in the works, but definitely keep an eye out for that. Another big moment, my book has been out for a year. It came out last December around this time. I have been a author illustrator with my book in stores for a year now and that was a huge moment for me. That was something I have been dreaming about my whole life and it came true. So the fact that I still get photos from some of my friends saying, look what book I came across up um, in my local bookstore, it's, it's, it's mind blowing still and it's very exciting. So yeah, that was another big moment. And then the last big moment has nothing to do with watercolor, but I am very proud because I have taken a hold of my health this year. Um, I don't know if you've noticed. I know you don't really see much of me, um, but you see my face. And I have been kind of on a fitness and health journey this past year, and I have committed to getting stronger and healthier. And I've actually lost 65 pounds since March. And, you know, I just, I wanted to be more active and healthier for my kids. And I put a lot of time and effort into that this year. So much so that I felt it kind of took away from my painting at times because I was really prioritizing that in my days and I don't regret it and I still am and I'm, I'm loving it. But it has become another kind of outlet for me of going to the gym and lifting heavy things. And I've just been really proud and happy with myself because it's given me more energy. It's given me, um, a better state of mind for my mental health and I've just really enjoyed it. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself and I, I don't plan on stopping because I got two little crazy boys that I have to keep up with and be healthy for, for the rest of my life. So I'm going to keep this going, but yeah, it's been a big year in that sense too, because that's a, that's a lot of weight to lose. Cause after my second baby, I, I gained 
a lot. And this job of sitting at this desk for eight hours straight painting, you know, you, ca you can't move a lot. I have like a walking pad under my desk, which I tried to use during editing, but it was very difficult. So I didn't, I didn't get out as much as I wanted to, but I made that pre made that a priority and I'm very happy. So those are some big moments and my favorite things of 2023 and that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this year of tutorials. I would love to hear what else you guys would like to see in the new year. Um, but besides that, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday. I hope you have a beautiful new year and I will see you in 2024. Thank you again all for watching and being such a great support of this channel and I will see you soon. Bye guys.